Hello, hello, everyone. How's everyone doing so far today? How's your day going? Thank you for being here. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So before we begin, we do want to get our technicalities out of the way. We do recommend that you view this webinar through a via a computer. That's the best way to view us. And um, we want you to make sure you do a quick sound check. So if at any any time during this webinar you do lose sound, there's an audio tab on your panel. Click open that audio tab and just make sure that it is defaulted to um, your whatever you're listening to. If it's your computer audio, make sure it's defaulted there. And also make sure like if you're wearing a headset that there's a, there's like a little drop down menu. Make sure that it's um, defaulted to whatever you're um, using to listen to us. OK, um, sometimes I don't know why, for whatever reason, this will. Um, sometimes unclick from there and, and do its own thing. So we just want to make sure that we go back there and make sure that it's clicked appropriately. Um, we do not recommend you view us from a mobile device or a tablet. Those seem to not be as compatible with webinar. Um, but if you are only able to view us from a phone or a tablet, please view us from the GoToWebinar app. You can download that GoToWebinar app from your store on either the Android or iPhone. And if you are on a phone, there's a little question box where you can chat with us, OK? And that's where we can see you. And. Some important information about the CEUs. So there will be an assessment to complete um, upon uh, you know, the end of this event. And you will receive the webinar link. We'll share it here at the end of the presentation. But you will also receive the link to the assessment as well as the password in an email responder one to 24 hours after this presentation. Just know that you must complete your CEU assessment test within 48 hours. After 48 hours, the access is closed. So just try to get in there and get it done as soon as you can. And um, please do not share this link with anyone. This is a violation of AMCI and AAPC copyright clause. And um, make sure that when you are um, doing your assessment, that you are putting your full name and your correct information in your assessment to make sure that you get those CEUs through AAPC and AHIMA. Okay, you wanna make sure that it gets um, correctly verified through, through those credentialing agencies. And our um, AMCI March Madness is in full effect. So we are on our second week. We have a lot of CEUs to still give away. So if you haven't signed up for some of our upcoming March Madness events, please do so. We do have one um, tomorrow, and then there's another one that will be on Monday. For e &M coding. Um, you can view our calendar at amcicoding.com and uh, sign up for any events there that, that, you would, uh, that you're interested in attending. And also, uh, we do offer, so you know, this, this one is a paid event. If you, um, if you want all access to all of our paid events, it is $100, and that is available now, and you will basically get to play back any March Madness event, the free as well as the paid events, and um, those, that price will be um, $100 until March 15th, and after March 15th, that price will go up significantly. So if you would like to have all access to our events, um, contact customer service, and they'll be happy to help you out. Now, do you need more CEUs? Well, we have a CEU course, and our um, CEU course, they are AMCI and um, HEMA approved. And the program meets AAPC guidelines for Core A, CPMA, and CPCD, so most AAPC credentials. And like I said, AHIMA, they are also uh, they also accept some of our CEUs. So you may, if you hold an AHIMA credential, you can contact AHIMA just to verify the ones that they will accept. And if you um, pay for the on demand, those all of the um, March Madness events will be available April first. Now you may hear us talk about the 2021 MCG manual, and if you're interested in purchasing this manual, you can contact us at customer service, or you can also go to our website and do so there. But this manual is wonderful. We use this in our classroom. This contains our um, 
CPT, CPT, ICD-10, and PCS guidelines and step-by-step step -step sequencing instructions. Um, it has a wealth of information in here. We have charts for you know, e &M. we have charts for principal diagnosis, there's 150 AMCI original guideline driven test prep scenarios, you have your AMCI test taking techniques, and CPC and CCS exam strategies. Now it's time to meet the A team. So our A team includes the wonderful Miss Becca, we have myself, Miss Tracy, uh, Miss Michonne, Miss Tamika, Miss Bennett, Miss Crystal, Miss Mills, and of course the beautiful Mrs. J. Mrs. J is here, so go ahead and say hello to her in the chat. She'll be, I'm sure she's there talking to all of you right now. And of course, we have our amazing assistant instructors. Miss Andrea, Miss Takima, Miss Tiffany, Miss Carla, Miss Denise. Miss Denise is here as well, so say hello to her in the chat. Miss Lakshmi, Miss Sarmi, Miss Patricia, Miss Kamishia, Miss Brenda, Miss Shalini, Miss Stacy, Miss New, Miss Han, Miss Melody, and Miss Tiffany. So we have a wonderful team here. And of course, I didn't forget that one on that last slide. I wanted to save the best for last because she is your instructor for today. She is the one that put together this wonderful presentation. We call her the MVP here at AMCI. She is one of our wonderful instructors. So please help me in welcoming the lovely Miss Rochelle. Hi, Miss Rochelle. How are you? Hi, Miss Tracy. I'm doing well and excited for today. Thank you so much for that wonderful in, um, introduction. And hello, coders. I am so delighted that you could join us today. Um, hopefully, you will enjoy this presentation. And welcome to another AMCI March Madness event. All right. We're going to get started, and hopefully, we'll see you um, chatting with us in the chat all the way through this presentation. Alrighty, thank you. Hi, wonderful coders. So question, was there a moment where you're thinking, okay, I'm coding the same stuff almost every day. I wish I could code something different. Or were you in your dental appointment lately and wondering, how are they going to code my dental procedures today? Well, that's exactly what I was thinking when I decided to create this presentation. Hello, my name is Rochelle, and welcome to HickBix Level 2 Advanced, and I think I got something that might pique your interest. I got something new, something different, and yes, interesting. How does ambulance and dental coding sound? Excited? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and get started then. The fun stuff. First, I need to take care of the legal stuff. CPT is a copyright of American Medical Association. All rights are reserved. CPC is a registered trademark of APC. APC content found within this presentation is a copyright of APC. Hickbix Level 2 includes codes and descriptors copyrighted by the American Dental Association's current dental terminology. Keyword concept, FTR, Chun, MCI Fab 7, Flip and Tap are all trademarks of AMCI. So the goals of this presentation is to focus our attention to two of the HICPIX Level 2 national code groups, the A codes and the D codes. So first, we're going to start by reviewing some typical ambulance flow of events and key ambulance HICPIX Level 2 codes to help understand and code them properly. Then, we're going to review the most common dental procedures and how to code them. And of course, we're going to provide scenarios for practice to hopefully bring you one step closer to your HICPIX Level 2 coding mastery. So before we move further, I just want to go ahead and say that our reference for this presentation is going to be the HICPIX Level 2 coding manual from AMA. Now, for some of you who may have a different publisher, you may find that you will not have the dental procedures in that book. That is because the dental services are actually a separate category of national codes. 
and are actually developed and copyrighted by the American Dental Association or ADA. But don't worry, so if you don't have the decodes, you're still going to enjoy this presentation. In fact, I provided a handout for you, so if you want to go ahead and check your handouts panel or ask a link in the chat and we're going to provide it for you. Um, the goal here really is to just be able to code the common dental procedures and with that resource, with your handout, I think you are going to be able to follow along. So with that being said, I think we're now ready. We're going to go ahead and get started with our discussion. Let's start with the transport services, including ambulance, the A codes. So now let's begin our discussion. We're going to go ahead and look at the A codes. So in your HICWIS Level 2 National Code says, the A codes houses transportation services, including the ambulance, which is what, what we're going to be looking at in a little bit. But I also want to mention that in this category or code group, you will also find medical and surgical supplies, administrative, miscellaneous, and investigational code supplies. But again, our focus here for this particular presentation is on transportation services and ambulance. Before we go further into this discussion, it's really important that we understand the reasonableness of the ambulance trip. Under the fee schedule, payment is made according to the level of medically necessary services that are actually furnished, meaning the payment is based on the level of service, service furnished or provided where they were medically necessarily and not on the vehicle that is used. So when we are coding, it's really important to understand this. And that is why we're actually going to go ahead and take a look at some of the most common ambulance services codes and take a look at the provisions that are included in those codes to help us understand it better, okay? So I know that I, I mentioned that we're going to talk about those definitions, but I did mention a little bit or basically talk about the reimbursement side of things, the billing side of things. And normally we don't really talk about the billing because we focus mainly on the coding part. But I think for this particular circumstance, I think this is going to help us um, understand ambulance service better. Okay, so remember I mentioned earlier that the payment for ambulance services is based on the level of service furnished or provided that were medically necessary and not simply on the vehicle use. I have a good illustration here that will help us understand that better, okay? So say for example, a transportation for a patient or for a Medicare beneficiary from his or her home or from a scene of accident or from another point of origin, that transportation from that place to the nearest hospital is typically billed under Part B. That is covered under your Part B services, okay? Now, when the patient um, gets to the hospital and somehow gets admitted, of course, then the services now is going to be payable under Part A because now the patient is under the hospital care. So are you following along with me so far, coders? All right. However, there are instances wherein maybe that same vehicle is going to be used differently. Say that patient who's already been admitted needs a further treatment that that facility doesn't have. And so they will go ahead and arrange a transportation of this patient that's already been admitted in the hospital. In fact, it is under their care. They are just arranging a transportation for this patient to go on a specialized um, specialty care, you know, um, service somewhere where the patient can get more medical uh, services that the patient needs. Okay, hopefully you're still following along with me. So I'm just talking about this patient being transported to say another hospital and this is being arranged while this patient is admitted to this original provider, correct? Now this type of transportation now the movement of this patient from the inpatient facility to another facility for further treatment, that transportation is called patient transportation. And guess what? 
that is going to be covered under Part A. It's no longer payable under Part B, even though, say for example, they use the same vehicle during that transport. It's a different thing. Again, remember, ambulance services are coded not simply on the vehicle used, rather the payment is based on the level of service furnished that are medically necessary. Okay, so hopefully that really helps. So then when we get to our definitions, you will understand why each of these ambulance services codes includes provisions um, in it. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to those definitions now. But really, before we go, though, this does make sense, right? Okay, let me know in the chat. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the definitions. So after taking a look at the reimbursement side of things, I think we can now go ahead and take a look at these ambulance services and what they mean. So pretty much an emergency medical services or EMS are also known as the ambulance services. These emergency services are providing urgent pre-hospital treatment and stabilization for serious illness and injuries and also provide transport to definitive care. And then we have the ambulance staff. So depending on the circumstances, the ambulance service vehicle is manned by the ambulance staff. It can be an EMT or also known as the EMT basic who cares for the patient at the scene of an incident and while taking patients by ambulance to the hospital, pretty much the skills that the EMT has is to assess a patient's condition and to manage respiratory, cardiac and trauma emergencies. And then we also have the EMT paramedics. And the main difference between an EMT and a paramedic lies on the level of education and the kind of procedures they are allowed to perform. While EMTs can administer CPR, glucose, and oxygen, paramedics can actually perform more complex procedures such as inserting um, IV lines, administering drugs, and applying pacemakers. And then we also have the advanced life support personnel. These are individuals trained to the level of emergency medical technician intermediate or paramedic. Right, since we already meet the staff, let's go ahead and take a look at the types of ambulance services. Pretty much we have the ground ambulance services and the air ambulance services, and I think the definition speaks for themselves, right? <laughs> a ground ambulance means it is an ambulance that is used to transport a patient with traumatic or medical condition or patients for whom the need for specialty care. Emergency or non-emergency medical care is anticipated either at the patient's location or during the transport. As we know, there are several categories or types of ground ambulance services. Um, some of them that we're familiar with could be the litter van um, ambulance or the wheelchair vans. Um, but I do have to say that in selection again, of codes is based on the patient's condition at the time of transport as well as the services rendered. So we are going to go ahead and take a look at those codes for ground ambulance services and define each of them. Okay, so let's go ahead and start by taking a closer look at code A0428. This code description reads, ambulance service, basic life support, non-emergency transport. Now, a BLS or a basic life support service consists of the provisions of a medically necessary supplies and services, including the basic life support ambulance service. And also, it must be staffed by an emergency technician or an EMT basic that is qualified in accordance with the state. So these two are the provisions of a basic life support. And if that context or if that provisions are fulfilled, fulfilled, sorry, then you will use the code A0428. Okay. All right. Now, next, let's go ahead and talk about A0429. 
A0429 is the ambulance service for basic life support emergency transport or BLS emergency. Now, can you distinguish the difference between A0428 and A0429? Okay, go ahead and type it in the chat, the keyword that you can find. Okay, if you said emergency, yes, that's absolutely right. So A0429 is a little different because of the um, context of emergency that is attached to this service. So first of all, A0429 must meet the provisions of a basic life support, meaning it must have a medically necessary supplies and services, including the ambulance service, as well as must be mandated or must be um, staffed by an EMT, right? So that's the one, the previous um, slide that we showed, the provisions of a basic life support. However, A0429 must also meet the context of an emergency response. And what is an emergency response? An emergency response is one that, at the time of the ambulance service, a provider or supplier was called, or there was a 911 call, um, and the provider responded with an immediate response, which is one that the ambulance or the provider begins as quickly as possible to take the steps necessary to respond to the call. So, in order for us as a coder to use A0429, all of these provisions must met, okay? Provisions of a basic life support, and it should be in the context of an emergency response. All right, so are you following along so far, coders? All right, good, hopefully so. Okay, so let's take a look at another code. Now let's take a closer look at code A0426. This code is for Advanced Life Support Level 1 or ALS1. An Advanced Life Support Level 1 is the transportation by ground ambulance and the provision of a medically necessary supplies and services, including the provisions of an ALS assessment. So whenever an ALS assessment is performed, then that could turn the service to become an ALS, okay? Um, an advanced life support assessment is actually an assessment that is performed by an ALS crew as part of an emergency response that was necessary because the patient's reported condition at the time of the dispatch was such that only an advanced life service crew was qualified to perform the assessment okay so when that happens now that will fulfill the provision of an advanced life support level one another way is whenever during that service an advanced life support intervention was performed by an emt paramedic or the emergency medical technician okay Again, so the advanced life support level one is going to be coded as A0426. All right, I do have a note here. I almost forgot to mention. Okay, so when I talk about the ALS assessment, just remember that an ALS assessment does not determine the level of service. Yes, because there's actually another code for an advanced life support level two. But hold on to that. We're gonna, I'm gonna make sure that we're gonna talk about the provisions of the ALS level two um, in a few minutes. But just to make sure we got this down pat, A0426, of course, again, is the code for an advanced life support level one. It must, it must meet the provisions of one of the following if it has an ALS assessment and if an advanced life support intervention was performed. Okay, did everybody following along on this one? All right, all right, sounds good, good. Good to know because I do want you to take a closer look at another code. Well, we're gonna do it together. So let's move on. And just like the basic life support wherein it can be in an emergency, 
um, context, there is also a code for an ad ambulance service for advanced life support emergency transport level 1. This is when medically necessary, the provisions of ALS 1 service that we just went over um, is in the context of an emergency response. An emergency response is one that, at the time of the ambulance providers or suppliers called, the response is immediate or the response is one which the ambulance or the provider or the supplier begins as quickly as possible to take the steps necessary to respond to the call. So I have a good illustration here. Hopefully that will help. This one kind of captures what an advanced life support ALS one emergency is. So basically it starts with a call and the ambulance provider responded emergently with the ALS ambulance provisions of either um, an ALS assessment or an ALS intervention. Now when that service provisions are fulfilled, then that is going to be where you can use the code A0427 for an advanced life support ALS1 emergency. Now we can take a look at the advanced life support level 2 or ALS2. Now this has the definition as the transportation by the ambulance and the provisions of medically necessary supplies and services, including at least three separate administrations of one or more medications by intravenous push or bolus or continuous infusion, and a ground ambulance transport medically necessary supplies and services and the provisions of at least one of the ALS procedures below. If some of these procedures are being performed, during that encounter, then that's going to be considered as an advanced life support level two. So here are those procedures. If they perform manual defibrillation or cardioversion, endotracheal intubation, or if they perform central venous line, cardiac pacing, chest decompression, surgical airway, and intraosseous line. Okay, so when those services are provided during that um, ambulance services, then that will now be categorized as an advanced life support, ALS2, and the code for that is going to be A0433. All right. Okay, so now that we have taken a look at all of, well, not all, but most of those ground ambulance services and the level of service that they pertain, let's now take a look at the mileage because this is another factor that you have to consider when coding for the ambulance services. Um, the guideline says that the mileage rate per such a mile applies for all types of ground ambulance services. Um, providers and suppliers must meet or must report all medically necessary mileage, including the mileage subject to a rural adjustment in a single line item. Pretty much it's telling us that for every ambulance services, we must code the mileage. And the charges for the mileage must be based on the loaded mileage only. Example, from a pickup of a patient to his or her arrival at the destination. It is presumed that all unloaded mileage costs are taken into account when a supplier establishes his basic charge for the ambulance services and his rate for loaded mileage. So I know this is pretty much billing side of things, but we just have to consider when we're coding for the ambulance services again that we also have to pay attention to the mileage because there is, there has to be a mileage attached to the, each ambulance services. And I'm going to show you those codes in my next slide. And here are your ground transportation mileage codes. You have code A0380 for basic life support, support mileage. You code this with your basic life support ambulance services, of course. Just pay attention that this code here per unit is per mile. A0380 codes per mile, okay? A0390 is your code for ALS mileage. So you code this along with 
your advanced life support okay just know again that the a0390 code per unit is per mile and then you have a0425 for ground mileage per statue mile okay everyone pretty much at this point we have covered all of our ground transportation services but we haven't talked about the air ambulance yet right so let's go through them and then after that we are go all going to put all of those codes in the glands and i promise you we'll have to do some coding exercise okay so let's turn our attention now to the air ambulance of course Air Ambulance is a specifically outfitted helicopter or a fixed-wing aircraft that transports injured or sick people in a medical emergency or over distances or terrain impractical for a conventional ground ambulance. Now, air ambulances must have two medical flight crew members who are certified or licensed in advanced life support. There's only two main codes for air transport. Mainly they are um, described or the description really pertains to the type of air transport. We have the rotary wing um, code A0431 for ambulance service, conventional air services transport one way. See that description rotary wing. Rotary meaning that the the wing rotates, so that would be for a helicopter type air transport. Then we have the code A0430 Ambulance Service Conventional Air Services Transport, which is one way for fixed wing. A fixed wing would be one that exactly looked like this, the one that the wing is fixed, like an airplane ambulance transport. And just like your ground transportation services where you add to the service the mileage, um, same is true for air transport services as well. So you have mileage codes for fixed wing air mileage per statue mile. That is going to be your code A0435. And you also have A0436 code for the rotary wing air mileage. And this code is per statue mile as well. So you code the mileage in addition to your um, air transport services um, separately okay now in addition to the codes that we already went over there are actually more transportation services that are in your a codes particularly in the transport services including ambulance and um, if you want to you can follow along with me using your helix level 2 manual or if you want to follow along the screen or if you haven't done so yet i did provide a handout for you in your handouts panel you can grab one right now and we are going to go ahead and look at slide 34 of that handout um what i want to do is just really have a closer look at these um codes not all of them but i wanted to familiarize ourselves to some of these codes so that we'll know what to when to use them okay are you ready so are you there okay so let's first take a look at a0021 this is an ambulance service and this is used for medicaid only you have a0080 for non-emergency transport per mile if you notice this already codes the mileage in fact the unit code for the following codes A0080 and A0090 is per mile. But the difference between the two is the A0080 is a non-emergency transport per mile for a volunteer with no vested interest, whereas A0090 is a non-emergency transport per mile for a vehicle provided by individual with, with a vested interest. And then you have A0100, this is for non-emergency transportation, example for taxi. Um, over there on the top of the page, we have A0384, that's the basic life support, uh, specialized service disposable supply for defibrillation. So you use this for the basic life support when the defibrillation is separately uh, reportable. We already went through A0390, of course, so let's take a look at A0392. This is the um, 
specialized service disposable supply defibrillation used for an advanced life support this is when um, the jurisdictions where defibrillation cannot be performed in the BLS ambulances so this one is particularly for ALS okay all right next a0394 is for ALS specialized service disposable supply for intravenous drug therapy a0396 in, is for the ALS specialized service disposable supplies for esophageal intubation and then we have more we have say a0130 this is a non-emergency transportation for a wheelchair van we have a0420 i would like to talk about this code on my next slide actually because i want to do a little bit of exercise with you using this code but look here down here at a0424 this is actually a code for extra ambulance attendant for ground als or bls or it can also be used for for air either fixed or rotary winged this just requires medical review but yeah you do have a code for extra ambulance attendant very interesting right so going back to that code a0420 this code will code for the ambulance waiting time so if the ambulance waited um, you have a code for that and this is for either advanced life support or basic life support and this is coded per 30 minutes increment so um, next to the code uh, below that code actually you will find a waiting timetable with a corresponding unit and a corresponding time um, attached to the unit so do you want to do a little bit of exercise to see how we can use these codes I know I do so let's go for it so say for example if the ambulance waiting time is two hours how would you code it go ahead share your answer in the chat coders I want to see what you got using this waiting timetable. And if you said for an ambulance waiting time of two hours, then you will be using code A0420 times three. That would be correct. Again, the unit code, the unit for, for code for A0420 is up per 30 minutes. So for uh, two hours, we are here at this code range. Well, not code range, time range of one, one and a half hour to two hours, and that would be three minutes. So great job, coders. What about if the ambulance waiting time is three hours and 17 minutes? How would we code it? If you said six units will we will need we will be needing six units so a0420 times six so that would be three to three and a half hours equals three units then you would be correct now what about finally actually this is the last one if the ambulance waiting time is 35 minutes how would we code it yes good job a0420 of course again because this is only coding for for 30 minutes increment so for 35 minutes you only would just need a code a0420 great job everybody and thank you so much for your participation again if you flip through the page you will find more transportation services but i think the rest of them are pretty straightforward so for the sake of time i'm actually going to go ahead and um, bring you to my next page where I, you can see um, most of the common transportation and ambulance services at the glance so let's go ahead and take a look okay so let's go ahead and take a look at everything that we learned so far about the ambulance codes and um, I put it I put them all in um, at the glance for you so if you want to go ahead and follow along with me on slide 38 of your handout so we have the A0380 code for BLS mileage per mile, A0390 that is your ALS mileage per mile that will be coded in addition to your ALS ambulance services. We have A0426 are for ambulance service advanced life support, non-emergency transport level one. A0427 is for ambulance service ALS, ALS emergency transport level one. 
Then you have A0425 for ground mileage per statue mile. A0428 for your ambulance service, basic life support, non-emergency transport. A0429 is for BLS, emergency transport. A0430 is the ambulance service conventional air services transport one way. This is for the fixed wing. A0431 is the ambulance service conventional air services transport for rotary wing like helicopter. Then we have A0432 for paramedics ALS intercept. We have A0433 for ambulance service advanced life support level 2. And we have A0434 for ambulance service specialty care transport. And we have A0435 for air mileage per statue mile. And yeah, so those are the most common ones and their definitions. Okay, so now that we took care of all those um, ambulance codes, um, I want to turn your attention to the ambulance modifiers next. Now, um, according to Medicare, HIPAA level 2 codes for ambulance services must be reported with modifiers indicating the pickup origins and destinations. In addition, another modifier is also going to be used to indicate or describe the arrangement, which will be the QM and the QN, but we'll get to that next. First, I really want to go ahead and talk about the origin and destination modifiers. All right, coders, I think you're going to love this part, actually. So the reason why I say the ambulance modifiers are pretty fun is because you actually get to create the modifier to reflect the type of service. The origin and the destination modifier are created by combining two alpha characters from the list. I'm going to show you that list. You will actually find it on the first pages of your A codes. And each pair creates one modifier. The first alpha letter will reflect the place of the origin where the place where the patient is being picked up and the second position will indicate the destination and here are the ambulance modifier um, descriptions so we have character d this will indicate diagnostic or therapeutic site other than the um, physician's office or hospital when these are used as origin codes e is for residential domiciliary custodial custodial facility G is for hospital-based dialysis facility, H to reflect hospital, I is for site of transfer, example this is airport, helicopter pad between modes of ambulance transport, J is for freestanding ESRD facility, N is for skilled nursing facility, P is for physician's office, R is for residence, S is for scene of accident or acute event, and X for intermediate stop at the physician's office on the way to the hospital and this is um, just remember that the X is going to be used as destination code only meaning you can only use the X as a second alpha character okay okay so now that you learned how to build an origin and destination modifier it's not going to be fun until we try it right so I have a few exercises here just a little mini scenario and I want you to help me build the origin and modifier that are appropriate for this scenario okay so you can use the screen right here I, ga I gave you here the modifier and the description that it stands for and then you can go ahead and use that to build your modifier for the following um, exercises so are you ready Okay, we have one here. An ambulance service is picking up a patient from a skilled nursing facility to the outpatient ESRD facility. What is the origin and the destination modifier that best describes this encounter? All right, coders, I'll just keep an eye on you in the chat. Tell me what you think is the appropriate origin and destination modifier for this encounter. All right, I'm seeing some great answers coming through. And if you said it would be NJ because the origin of this patient where the patient is being picked up is from the skilled nursing facility that gives you the character modifier N. And then the destination is, of course, outpatient ESRD facility. So that will have to be um, freestanding ESRD facility. That will be J, all right? Okay, so if you got that right, well, you just created your modifier. Great job. 
Okay, you want to try another one? Okay, so let's do it. We have a physician called an ambulance service to pick up a patient from his doctor's office to transport a patient to the hospital. What is the original or what is the origin and destination modifier that is applicable for this encounter? Okay, coders, you know what to do. Tell me in the chat what would be the appropriate modifier for this encounter. All right, and if you said pH is the modifier, that is correct because the patient's origin is from the uh, doctor's office, that will be physician's office, P, and then taken to the hospital, of course, the destination is hospital, that would give us an H. So the origin and destination for this particular encounter is going to be PH. Great job, everybody. Now, finally, we have one more. <laughs> what is the origin and, mo and destination modifier for an ambulance service arranged to transport a patient from hospital back to the skilled nursing facility? All right, coders, go right ahead. Tell me in the chat what you think. And if you said the modifier would be H and then you would be correct. H from the hospital destination is going to be skilled nursing facility, which would be character N. Well, you did an amazing job creating your origin and destination modifiers. How'd you feel? Okay, did you find it fun? I know I did. <laughs> All right, now we took care of the origin and destination modifier. Remember, we do need another set of modifier. That is the QM and the QN, so let's talk about it. These are your arrangement modifiers. Okay, so in addition to the origin and destination modifiers, institutional-based providers must also report one of the following modifiers with every HICWIX code to describe whether the service was provided under arrangement or directly. So we have two options, modifier QM or modifier QN. QM are for ambulance service provided under arrangement by a provider of services. This is when the arrangement is made by the provider with another ambulance company. Now, QN is the ambulance service furnished directly by a provider of the services, meaning the provider and the ambulance service are the same. Okay? All right, coders, so now that we've learned all the components that are needed to code for ambulance services, or transportation services, now it's time for us to go ahead and try and look up a code. So following the steps, we have first to go to the index, make sure that you search ambulance. And from there, you can look up, see which type of ambulance is appropriate. And then, Again, we never code from the index, so you always have to verify that code in your tabular list. So that should take you to the A codes. And from your A codes, there you can go ahead and start looking up the code. Now, if you are coding for ALS and VLS for either ground and air transport, of course, don't forget to code for the mileage. And then think about the modifiers that are appropriate for that service. All right, coders. And with that being said, I think we are now ready. And we have a few exercises to put everything into practice. Are you ready, coders? I know I am, so let's do it. All right, it's time for us to do some coding exercise. So if you want to code along with us, that's amazing. Or if you want to just lay back and, you know, just watch everything unfold, that's fine too. But hopefully that you will also learn along in the process. So, okay, let's get coding. I have an exercise coming up for you. Okay, so here's your exercise. A mother gave birth to a baby while en route to the hospital. The father managed to take both the mom and the baby to the local hospital after birth. While in the hospital, the baby needed further treatment because she developed neonatal sepsis. The hospital furnishes a neonatal transport ambulance service to transport the baby to the children's hospital 30 miles away next town to get the best care that she needs. What are the transportation service code and modifiers that best describes this encounter? So I know some of you coders who wants to go ahead and code um, this yourself. So I'm going to give you a minute 
again for some of you who just want to hang around and just chill um, we'll be back and we're going to go ahead and look this goes up together okay so i'm going to give you a minute and your time begins right now happy coding I guess that was two minutes, sorry. <laughs> but I figured, I think that was worth the wait, right? So hopefully you have your codes with you. So let's see what we come up here. So if you're following along with me. So we are coding for a neonatal transport ambulance service. So if you're looking it up from your um, HICWIX level two alpha index, you're gonna go ahead and look for ambulance. And we're gonna be, um, given the code range A0021 to A0999 because really there's really nothing much under here that pertains to the type of ambient services that we're looking for. So we're going to go ahead and verify and look this up in your tabular list. So go ahead coders, um, turn your page to your tabular list. And here we are. So again, uh, Probably by now, some of them looks familiar to you, but if you sort this out and you look down here at code A0225, that is your code for ambulance service for neonatal transport base rate, emergency transport one way. And that's exactly what we're looking for to code for this ambulance services that is documented, particularly neonatal transport. So do you got that code coders? All right, now what else do we need? So don't forget that we also need to code for the mileage and that is going to be code A0425, ground mileage per statue mile. So since this is this unit code per code is for a statue mile to code for our 30 miles together, that should give us a code here, A0225, again, to code for the ambulance service for neonatal transport, and A0425 times 30 to code for the 30 miles of ground mileage covered for this um, ambulance service. So is everybody following along? Okay, good. Now let's go ahead and figure out the modifiers that we need for this encounter. Okay, first we're going to talk about the arrangement modifiers here. So what is the arrangement um, that is, um, or what type of arrangement modifier is applicable here? We have QM, which is an ambulance service provided under arrangement by a provider of services. Um, the way that you can actually help with this one is, the coding tip here is that when an arrangement is made by the provider with an ambulance company, when it involves an ambulance company, then you go ahead and use modifier QM. 
However, in our case here, the hospital actually furnished the neonatal transport. So the provider and the ambulance service are the same. So we are actually going to choose QN for this one. So do you agree, coders? Tell me in the chat if you do. All right, perfect. So we have QN as our arrangement modifier. Next, we're going to go ahead and figure out our origin and destination modifier. Okay, so this one is pretty easy. So we're going to go ahead and determine our origin and destination modifier. So where is the origin for this patient? Where did this um, patient being picked up from? From the local hospital and being transported to the another hospital, which is another is which is your destination. So the origin and the destination modifier for this scenario is going to be HH. So now we have all the components that we need. Let's go ahead and put it all together. Okay, so we have all of the codes that we need for this scenario. And the answers are A0225 with body parts QM and HH and A0425 times 30 with modifiers QM and HH. If you got that right, well, you are outstanding. All right, I have another scenario here. We have a paramedic are on the scene to attend two people who are involved in a motor vehicle accident. Patient A only had minor injuries and was taken to the nearest hospital by ground ambulance. However, upon assessment, patient B is declared to be in critical condition. The EMT staff on the scene called in a trauma department of the state medical center to brief them of the patient's status. The trauma team provider dispatched an air ambulance to airlift the patient from the site of the transport to the state medical hospital. 30 minutes later, the patient arrived, to, arrived at the state medical center and the trauma team was already in standby to take care of the patient. Code the air transport service and the applicable modifiers for patient B and the air loaded mileage time documented was 60 miles. All right, coders, I'll give you a minute to try this out on your own. And then when we come back, we're going to sort this out together. OK, your time begins right now. Good luck and happy coding. All right, coders, I'm so sorry if that's all the time I can give you, but we can always look this up together, okay? So for this one, we are coding for the transportation services of patient B. So it tells here that because of the injuries that patient B had, they actually had to dispatch an air ambulance, a helicopter to, to airlift the patient. Okay, so we are now going to be coding for the air ambulance here, particularly a helicopter, which is going to be a rotary wing um, type. So with that being said, if you look it up from your index, you're going to look up A0021 to A0999. But actually, if you look down, you can actually kind of go straight to the point here because there is the code for conventional transport one way rotary wing the code is a0431 so let's go ahead and take a look at that but while we're here we also are going to need for the air loaded mileage right 60 miles so so we're going to have to take a look at code a0436 as well all right coders let's go ahead and verify the following 
Okay, so here in your tabular list, just to verify, the air ambulance service code for a transport one way for a rotary wing um, ambulance service is A0431. Now notice, um, we are just going to be coding this for one way transport because they actually code for the loaded mile meaning that is from the time that the patient is being picked up from the location to the destination. So that's just going to be one way. So the code here again is A0431. However, we do have to code for the mileage. Okay. And the uh, mileage, remember we have to code the air loaded mileage. And for this encounter, the documented mileage was 60 miles. So that will give us a code A0436. Rotary wing air mileage per statue mile. So to code for all 60 miles together, your codes are going to look like this A0431 and A0436 times 60. All right, following along so far. Now let's go ahead and t take a look now at our modifiers. So let's talk about the arrangement modifiers here. So basically for this particular encounter, the trauma team, which is going to be the provider for this patient because they are the receiving end, of course, they are the ones who actually dispatch the air ambulance and they are going to be the one who is going to be taking care of this patient. They will be the provider. So between QM and QN, which one do you think would be the best modifier for this? Exactly, QN, because the provider and the ambulance service are the same. So this is going to be our first modifier. Next, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our ambulance origin and destination modifier. My favorite. <laughs> okay, coders, so we're now in our favorite again, <laughs> the origin and the destination. And I have a feeling that you already got this down pat. Um, if you do, go ahead and share your answer in the chat. So the origin here is from the site of transport. Remember, we're talking about the air transport here, right, for patient B. So the patient was picked up from the site of transport, which would give you I, alpha character I first, followed by state medical hospital. That's the destination. So our origin and destination modifier will be IH. Alrighty, so now we have all of our components together. We'll put all of our codes together. So we got everything you need for our answers for this scenario. We have A0431 with modifiers QN and IH and A0436 times 60 with modifiers QN and IH. So great job if you got that one right. And I have another bonus for you. So if you were wondering how the ambulance claim is going to look like, so I actually found a sample copy of an ambulance claim um, and I just put in the codes here. So this is how you're going to be coding it. So under here on uh, space D for your procedures, services or supplies, this is where you're going to go ahead and put in the HICPIX level 2 code for the air rotary base um, ambulance service A0431. Followed by next to that is the circumstance, you know, the modifier to indicate circumstances. So you have here QN and IH. And then as you can see, you have another line for your mileage. That's going to be A0425. And don't forget the units for that mileage is going to be 60. And like I said, next to the codes are going to be your modifiers, the arrangement modifiers and the site of uh, the site of the origin and the destination uh, modifiers. OK. All right. Pretty cool to see it in the ambulance claim, right? OK, good. All right. Now let's get back to those more scenarios. OK, so here's your scenario. Mrs. Tubblewurm's daughter found her mother in her bathroom after a terrible slip and fall. She complained about extreme pain in her hip area and could not move. Her daughter called 911 and a local ambulance service emergently dispatched an advanced life support ALS-1 to uh, ambulance service to the patient's residence. 
Upon arrival, the EMT paramedic provided intervention to ensure the patient is safely loaded to the ambulance and successfully transported her to the nearest hospital. The mileage documented was 15 miles. What are the transport service codes and the ambulance modifiers that best describes this encounter? All right, coders, go right ahead. Tell me what you think in the chat. If you know the codes, um, share it there, okay? I'll give you a minute to code it on your own. And then when you come back, we're going to code this together. Okay, coders, so what type of ambulance service are we coding for here? Okay, so it is documented here that um, it is the dispatch type of ambulance service was the advanced life support ALS-1. But remember, it's not about the vehicle, it is the provision. So we're definitely going to have to take a closer look at that, okay, when we get to our tabular list. What else do we need from here? We also have to take a look at those mileage correct okay i think you already know what to do coders let's go ahead and flip that page to your tabular list and verify okay so here we are now in our tabular list but again we have to be very careful to make sure that we are um, fulfilling all the provisions of the advanced life support to make sure before we get to use that code for a als1 so Remember our definitions for advanced life support. It has to be, um, it has to be that advanced life support one services must be provided, meaning that there has to be an intervention, correct, and um, there has to be an assessment. And as I can see here, yes, it did fulfill that because if you look, the paramedic actually provided intervention during the services, so that fulfilled that first one. And the service must be in the context of an emergency response, which indeed happened because when the doctor called 911, the local ambulance services after the assessment dispatched emergently. Okay, so we fulfilled our provisions, so therefore we can use this code A0427 ambulance service advanced life support emergency transport level one ALS one emergency. All right. All good on this one? Perfect. Now let's go ahead and code our mileage, of course, because this is an ALS-1 ground transport. We do have a mileage code for that, which would be A0390, and this goes per mile. So altogether, our code should look like this, A0427 and A0390 times 15. Okay, those are your codes for the ambulance services. Now let's go ahead and figure out our modifiers. Okay, coders, what about the arrangement modifiers for this encounter? What do you think? Would you choose QM or QN? Okay, that's right. I think QM is the most appropriate here because there was an arrangement. They actually hired a local ambulance service to um to fulfill the transportation and the ambulance services and then they brought the patient to the hospital so definitely qm is your modifier now next we're going to go ahead and determine our origin and modifier uh, destination code and then we're done for this scenario and this is going to be easy of course so the origin 
yes residents and the destination is hospital so therefore our origin and destination modifier for this scenario is going to be rh awesome now let's put everything together coders and conclude this scenario all right so let's go ahead and put our codes together oh i'm sorry mom and then we have <laughs> i got distracted and i feel bad so our answers are a0427 with modifier sqm and modifier rh and a0390 to code for the mileage times 15 with modifier sqm and rh now if you got that right well you are outstanding thank you again so much for participating in this little coding exercise i hope you appreciate it as much as i did i certainly appreciate your effort and um guess what we have something good coming up next all right everyone i think that's pretty much everything that i can share so far as far as the ambulance and transportation services so um, for the time being we are going to go ahead and say so long to ambulance modifiers but hey we have to say hello to the decodes and now we're going to go ahead and focus our attention to the decodes for dental coding i'm excited about this Okay, so from here on out, if you are following along with me with your AMA HICWIX Level 2 manual, we are now going to be focusing our attention to the dental procedures D0170 to D0330. Now, if you don't have the AMA version, if you have the APC, please do not be surprised that you cannot find dental procedures in your manual because the dental codes are actually separated from the rest of the national level two codes because they are um, maintained by the um, american dental association don't worry for the purpose of this presentation i think the handout is good enough that you can follow along with us okay of course we are not going to be able to um, grasp entire concept of dental coding within one hour so our goal really here is just to review get ourselves familiarized with some of the common dental procedure codes and yes we're going to be coding but it's not going to be that heavy coding okay all right so let's go ahead and get started let's talk about dental coding so again, decodes houses your dental procedures and dental coding, the key concern for many dental practice circles around dental codes and their ability to properly code various procedures for insurance purposes. Now using correct dental procedure code is critical and often confusing. And while medical coders rely on current procedural uh, terminology, the CPT, medical billing codes for dental procedures utilizes the current dental terminology. They have their own book. <laughs> they have the CDT. And the CDT is maintained by the American Dental Association or ADA. And it contains all the dental procedure codes required to code each dental procedure or procedures for submission to a dent uh, specific dental insurance plan and what are in your C CDT manual. The CDT codes and the CDT codes are a set of medical codes for dental procedures that, are, that cover oral health and dentistry. And if you are wondering how do dental practices submit using CDT dental codes, well, they actually have their own form called ADA American Dental Association dental claim form wherein it's very specific to what they need it's called J400 form and this form is specifically designed to accommodate dental um, information so as you can see here look they have a very specific information to put in the following the area of oral cavity the tooth system tooth number of letter tooth surface area procedure and so forth so it's really very specific to dental coding all right 
I just share this information with you because I thought it's pretty cool, but I know what you like to hear. You want to hear about the dental procedures and how we are going to call them. So let's get to it then. So in the HIGFIX Level 2 Coding Manual, the dental services are characterized by um, subcategories and they include preventative, restorative, endodontics, periodontics, implant services, oral and maxillofacial surgery, orthodontics, and adjunctive general services. Okay, so if I were to guess, you're probably thinking, okay, those are some dental terms that I don't know about unless you are awesome. <laughs> awesome, awesome that you already know these dental terms, but I actually found this commonly known as terms for dental procedures that we can go ahead and review. This should help us understand these code procedures better and by understanding the code procedures better then we'll be able to call them, right? Okay, so I'm going to do it in a little interactive way. So if you know your dental terms, come on over and, you know, tell it in the chat, share your answers in the chat and help us out because I certainly don't know all of them. So I have endodontrix. Do you know what that term is commonly known as? Okay. Yes, indeed, that, is, that pertains to root canals. Great job. How about extraction? Okay, I know this one. <laughs> this one is easy. That's tooth removal, yes. What about gingivitis? That's early gum disease. Great job if you got that right. How about periodontitis? Periodontitis is advanced gum disease. Great job. What about orthodontics? Do you know what that pertains to? I think everybody knows this one. Yes, braces. Good job. Talk about orthodontics. It talks about braces. How about osseous surgery? Commonly known as bone surgery. Okay, impacted tooth. Now, I have to admit this one, I, I don't know that it's commonly known as this, but if you know it, I'm going to be very impressed. I know what impacted tooth is, but I didn't know that they call it as tooth buried in bone. Well, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> All right, next, prophylaxis. What does that mean in common term? Yes, teeth cleaning, that is. Good job. What about radiograph? This one is easy, of course, pertains to x-rays. Um, restorations. Fillings, yes, exactly. What about scaling, routine planning? All right, that pertains to deep cleaning of your teeth. Salience. Salience are things that are the plastic coating that they put on your tooth or teeth. And I think this is the final one, bruxism. Anybody know what bruxism is? It's tooth grinding. Great job, coder. So um, if you want, like I said, you have this in your copy for your handouts. It's really helpful because if you kind of know what they are and uh, what the dental terms are, it's going to be helpful um, in looking up the code. I'm going to show you how. Okay, and just like in medical coding, in CBT coding, we have to know our anatomy and physiology, right? Well, in dental coding, it's also important that we get ourselves familiarized with the tooth and mouth anatomy. So I have a really good, nice, clean, and very um, easy to understand tooth and mouth anatomy copy for you in your handout, like so. I don't think I need to explain this. <laughs> it's very straightforward, but you're going to need this information for proper coding, of course. Okay? All right? 
Okay, so here we are. Now it's time for us to get a closer look at those clinical oral evaluation codes. We have D0120. This is the code for periodic oral evaluation for established patient. Pretty much, this is an evaluation performed on a patient of a record to determine any changes in the patient's dental and medical health status since a previous comprehensive or periodic evaluation. So typically this is when a patient comes in for a periodic oral evaluation. Then you have D0140. This is for limited oral evaluation problem focused. This is an evaluation that is limited to a specific oral health problem or complaint. Okay, and then we have D0145, this is oral evaluation for a patient under three years of age and counseling with primary caregiver. This is for pretty much the diagnostic services performed for a child under three. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think that's all I can say about this one. Next, we have D0150, this is for comprehensive oral evaluation. So a comprehensive oral evaluation for new or established patient. This is used by the general dentist and or specialist when evaluating a patient comprehensively. This applies to new patients, established patients who have had a significant change in health conditions or other unusual circumstances by report or established patients who have been absent from active treatment for three or more years. Okay, so that's what that code is for. Then we have D0160 for detailed and extensive oral evaluation. This is problem focused by report. Now a detailed and extensive problem focused evaluation entails an extensive diagnostic and cognitive modalities based on the findings of a comprehensive oral evaluation. Okay, then we have D0170. This is a re-evaluation limited problem focused established patient, not post-operative. So this is pretty much assessing the status of a previously existing condition. Okay, and then we have D0171, a re-evaluation of post-operative office visit. Re-evaluation, pretty much this one is straightforward. Then we're going to move on to D0180, comprehensive periodontal evaluation for new or established patient. Now, this procedure is indicated for a patient showing signs or symptoms of a period, uh, periodontal disease and for patients with risk factors such as smoking or diabetes, okay? All right, so that's it. So you have this in your handout. We may be able to use this later. Now I'm gonna move on to the next set of codes. I'm gonna show you some of the pre-diagnostic services. So under diagnostic imaging codes, here are the most commonly used ones. We have D0210. This is intraoral complete series of radiographic images. This is a radiographic survey of the whole mouth, usually consisting of 14 to 22 periapical and posterior brewing images intended to display the crowns and the roots of all teeth, periapical ears, and alveolar bone. Then we have D0220. This is intraoral periapical first radiographic image. D0230 is for intraoral periapical each additional radiographic image. And then we have D0330. This actually is a code for panoramic radio radiographic image. Okay, so the last set of codes I'm going to show you are the preventative dental codes, and these are the most common ones, so I thought I'd share this with you. We have D1110, that's your tooth cleaning pretty much, remember, prophylaxis for adult. This is the removal of plaque, calculus, and stains from the tooth structures and implants in the permanent and transitional dentition. It is intended to control local ir irritation factors. And then you have one, 
D1120 for prophylaxis for a child. And then you have D1206. This is a topical application of fluoride varnish. D1208 is a topical application of fluoride excluding varnish. And then you have the nutritional counseling for control of dental disease. This is counseling on food selection and dietary habits as part of treatment and control of periodontal disease. So this is going to be your code D12310. <laughs> okay. And then another counseling here is for tobacco counseling D1320. Pretty much this is tobacco prevention and cessation services reduce patients risk of developing tobacco related oral diseases and conditions and improves prognosis for certain dental therapy so this is your code d1320 for tobacco counseling for the control and prevention of oral disease and then we have d1330 for oral hygiene instruction this may include instruction for home care. Examples include toothbrushing technique, flossing, use of special oral hygiene and stuff. And finally, we have code D1351. This is the code for saline, and this is coding per tooth. All right? Okay, so have this list with you and you should be good to go. I think we're about getting ready to start looking up codes and start practicing dental coding. Okay, so the last step that we need to review is, of course, how to look up a code in your HIFIX Level 2 manual. Same is true when you're looking for dental procedures. So look up the main term in the index. This time you're going to go ahead, pretty much look at the main term den dental or dental procedures. And from there, you verify the code in the tabular list and check guidelines and notations for proper coding. And that's it. Okay, we're finally here. My favorite part. We're going to do some scenario practice on dental procedures. Yes, I believe that, you know, um, applying what we learned so far in a scenario is really going to, is the best way to learn. And um, of course, you're welcome to just chill if you want to just, you know, um, see how everything comes to play but if you are someone who wants to go ahead and do some action and really try and code for yourself again i included um, some resources in your handout i think um, you have enough resources there to be able to follow along but most of all really again the goal here is to have fun and let's see if you are able to go ahead and code some dental procedures with this scenario practice i have a feeling that you will do awesome all right let's get started all right so we have here our first dental procedure coding scenario we have samantha is in the dental office today for a complete replacement of dentures of the upper right lateral incisor and canine cuspid teeth code encounter all right coders using your handout you have your codes there to choose from um, i'm going to give you two minutes and this is for those for the benefit of those who really wants to go in there and code it for themselves so i'll give you two minutes and again as promised when we come back we're going to look up codes together too all right so good luck and happy coding time starts now
All right, coders, that is time. Did you have fun looking up that code? And if you come up with your code, go ahead, please share it in the chat. We'd love to see what you got. All right. Okay, good. Thank you. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at my, what I come with what I come up with. <laughs> so we have Samantha is in the dental office today for a complete replacement of broken denture of the upper central and lateral incisor called the encounter. All right. So the first step, we're going to go ahead and look it up from your index. You can either look it up from the main term dental procedure. And if I go look here, hmm, I don't know. But as I'm sorting through, I actually found dentures there. So why not go for dentures, right? This is a replacement of a broken denture. So I'm going to go ahead and straight uh, look straight to that code D5110 to D5899. All right, coders, let's go ahead and take a look. If you're following with me on the handout, go ahead and turn to the next page. Or, yeah, next slide. And then we can go ahead and see the tabular list. Okay, so here we are now in our tabular list. So the code range from index took us to repairs to complete dentures. It looks like we're in the right place so far, but there's only three codes here to choose from. You have D5511 for repair. That's definitely not what we're looking for. D5512 is a repair of broken complete denture base. No, that's not what we're looking for either. But look here, D5520, replace. That is going to be our keyword, replace, missing or broken teeth, complete denture. And this is coding for each two. So now we have to determine how many broken dentures are being replaced for Miss Samantha girl here. It looks like Miss Samantha lose the dentures of the upper right lateral incisor and the canine cuspid teeth. So let's go ahead and reference our um, the anatomy of the mouth, okay, to see how many teeth are being replaced. Okay, so referencing our anatomy of the teeth here, let's go ahead and look at upper lateral incisor. Looks like it's right there. And then canine cuspid teeth. All right. Okay, so it looks like there's two teeth that's been replaced, or two dentures, sorry, that's been replaced. Okay, so now that we have this information, we're ready to code. So the answer for this scenario coders, if you got D5520 times 2, then you would be correct. That is outstanding. Great job. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Now let's pick up the pace and let's do some more exercises. Are you ready? Okay, I know I am. All right, everyone, I have another scenario for you. If you want to go ahead and try and code it, we have a 35-year-old patient is seen by the dentist today for a scheduled oral prophylaxis to remove black calculus and stains from her many years of coffee, tobacco smoking, and bad oral hygiene. He was also given tobacco counseling for the control and prevention of oral disease. Code the services provided during this encounter. All right, coders, I'll give you two minutes, and your time begins right now. Good luck.
Okay, that is time everyone. Let's go ahead and code this together. So if we are to look this up from the index, what would be our main term? Can you tell me in the chat? Okay, dental procedures. Yes, absolutely. What else? We can actually narrow it all down. We're talking about prophylaxis. And this is for prevention of an oral disease. So if you look down the list here, you can actually find preventive there. So that gives you a code range of D1000 to D1999. So let's go ahead and take a look at that in our tabular list. So first things first, under preventative, um, dental prophylaxis. So we have two codes to choose from. One is for adult and one is for child. And obviously this patient is 35 year old. So we're gonna go ahead and use D1110 for prophylaxis for adults. And that's exactly what we need. So great job everybody if you got that right. But what else is missing here? Yes, we still have to code for the tobacco counseling. Remember um, this patient was given a tobacco counseling for the control and prevention of the oral disease as well. So that is code, if you look it up, D1320, tobacco counseling for the control and prevention of oral disease. Exactly what we need. So guess what coders? We're gonna have and put it all the answers together and your code for this encounter would be D1110 and D1320. So if you got that right, well, you are amazing. You're getting hang of it. How are you feeling, coders? Enjoying it? I know I did. All right, I do have some more scenarios. So let's go ahead and do some more practice. Okay, we have another scenario. A 25 year old patient came in today for an endodontic therapy of the lower right first molar tooth. The nerve of the pulp was infected due to tooth decay that was left untreated. Dr. Johnson proceeded with removing the inflamed and infected pulp tissues. Afterwards, deep cleaning was performed inside the tooth followed by disinfection. The tooth was then sealed with porcelain crown. The patient tolerated the procedure well. Code encounter. Right coders, I'll give you two minutes and I think this will be our last scenario for the night. Good luck on this one and have fun coding and the time begins right now. Okay, so did you share your answers in the chat? 
All right, perfect. Now let's go ahead and look up the codes together this time. So, of course, we're coding for dental procedures, particularly endodontic therapy. So that would actually lead us to look at subcategory endodontic, uh, endodontic, sorry, D3000 to D3999. And we're going to go ahead and verify that codes in the tabular list. Okay, so here we are in our tabular list under endodontic therapy, including treatment plan, clinical procedures, and follow-up care. So for our encounter, the endodontic therapy was in the right first molar tooth. And as you can see, uh, the different code range here, the difference is the um, particular tooth that is involved. And like I said, we're coding for the molar, so that means that our correct code will be D3330, all right? Now, another thing here is that if you actually read the code description, this excludes the final restoration. Look here, coders. I'm going to take you to this next slide. They did seal that tooth. There was a restoration performed, and they actually sealed that tooth with porcelain crown. And since D3330, the endodontic therapy code did not include the final restoration, we have to code for the restoration of that particular um, tooth. And in our case, we have to code for porcelain crown. So under restoration crowns, we're also going to be looking up code for the crown porcelain, and that gives us a code of D2740. Now, if you got that right, well, you absolutely are outstanding. That was not easy to find, but you were being forensic. Great job, coders. So proud of you. Okay, so it looks like we may yet have time to do one last scenario. So are you in? Okay, this one is a good one, and I kind of want to end it on a high note. So let's try this scenario out. We have Roxy is in the dental office complaining of pain on her lower right side teeth. Upon examination together with a panoramic radiograph, it revealed that there's no enough space for third molar to erupt. The impacted molar is in unusual position and needs to be removed. After anesthesia, the dentist performed a surgical removal of a complete impacted lower right third molar. What is the code or codes best describes this encounter? Okay, so do you want to try and look up the codes yourself using your handouts? Okay, I'll give you two minutes for this one, and your time begins right now. Good luck!
Okay, everyone, do you have your codes ready? If you do, please go ahead and share your answers in the chat. And if you want to code along with me right now, let's do it. Let's get started, of course. First things first, we're going to go ahead and look up the codes in your alphabetic index from dental procedures. And what do you think is the best keyword that we can get from this um, scenario coders? Yeah, I agree. I would like to go with examination. And usually examination, that falls onto diagnostic, right? Okay, so let's take a look at that code range D0120 to D0999. Okay, so here in the tabular list, we're going to go ahead and sort out all of the procedures that are performed during this encounter. First, we have the examination. Examination usually uh, means evaluation. So what type of evaluation? Well, this is actually a limited or oral evaluation or problem focus because the definition for this code is this is an evaluation limited to a specific oral health problem or complaint. We can um, we can verify that because Roxy is in the dental office today complaining of pain on her lower right side teeth. Okay, so do you agree with that coders? All right, if so, then our evaluation code is D0140. All right, now next, what else happened? Because in addition to the evaluation, according to this red notes here, this may require interpretation of information acquired through additional diagnostic procedures. So we have to ask ourselves, was there a diagnostic procedure performed in this encounter too? Yes, I see that. See here? Um, together with the examination and the panoramic radiograph that actually revealed um, the, you know, the, about the problem of that third molar teeth, tooth, okay? So, and what do we do with that radiograph? Well, it tells us here to report additional diagnostic procedures separately. So then we're going to have to code it separately. So if you look it up, under radiograph, D0330 is the code for panoramic radiograph image. And then we have to code that as well separately. Okay, so following along so far. All right, is there anything else that will complete this um, codes for our, um, for our procedures today? Yes, I see it too. The, the dentist performed a surgical removal of a complete impacted lower right third molar and going back to this guideline here definitive procedures may be required on the same date as evaluation so coders guess what that's exactly what happened here there was a definitive procedure performed on that same day and if we are to code for removal of impacted tooth completely bony i'm just following the guy the keywords provided here it says complete impacted lower right third molar so i am going to use this code d7240 what do you think all right yes i think that completes our our code so we have coded the evaluation we have d0140 we coded our uh Diagnostic imaging D0330, and finally we have coded our definitive procedure. So, coders, we have our answers. If you got D0140, D0330, and D7240, well, you are outstanding. Good job, everyone. I didn't know about you, but I absolutely had fun doing those coding exercises with you. And hopefully you learned something too. And um, I want to say thank you so much for your participation, for coding along, and for your engagement in the chat. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, I hate to say it, but yes, it's time for us to do the final recap. Here is what we learned in this presentation. So in this presentation, we reviewed typical ambulance flow of events and key ambulance HCPCS level 2 codes. We also reviewed the most common dental procedures and how to code them. 
and we provided some scenarios for practice and hopefully we brought you one step closer to HIGWIX Level 2 Coding Mastery. All right, coders, that concludes our presentation. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hopefully that you enjoyed and you learned something too. I want to actually hear it. Um, which part did you like better? The ambulance coding, the dental coding, or both? <laughs> I kind of want to see. If you can, you know, share your answer in the chat, that would be great. All right, somebody loved dental. Dental coding. Oh, somebody like both. Ah, yeah, that's kind of like me too. I like both. But dental is a little uh, very interesting. Oh, thank you. A lot of you are saying both. I'm so glad. All right, so um, I did put in the chat now the um, CEU link if you want to complete the assessment. Um, for the assessment, you don't have... If you don't have the HICWIX Level 2 manual, that's okay. Um, I think you have everything to be able to answer all questions there. And um, again, if you have any questions, though, please let us know here in the chat. I'll stay a while. But please don't forget to leave us a feedback. We really want to hear what you think about this presentation. And hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow because we have another one for uh, Miss Tracy's actually his presentation on NCCI Edit. So if you're interested, make sure that you sign up for that. And um, let me see here. Oh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and invite Miss Tracy in and Miss Denise to say good night. Or no, not good night. <laughs> I'm always used to having a night classes, so pardon me, coders. But you all want to join me here? What do you think about these wonderful students today? Hi, Ms. Rochelle. I just want to say thank you so much, Ms. Rochelle, for the wonderful presentation. I learned a lot today, too. I didn't know too much about dental coding, so thank you so much for the clarification on that and go, diving a little bit deeper into the ambulance codes as well. Very informative. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Attendees, thank you so much for being here today. We appreciate it, and um, thank you for your participation, and we hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. All right, thank you so much, Miss Tracy. All right, with that said, I think we're ready to close. And thank you, Miss Denise, she's in the chat. And um, we'll see you again soon. And let's enjoy this song before we end. 4,000 exam passers and free classes at AMCI. Learn to coach, try from home, or on the road at AMCI.